Welcome to Marty's Toy Box, where we discuss, unbox, and review wrestling figures from all over the world and from all different time periods. On today's video, we discuss the entire history of the WWF and WWE action figures from the start in 1984 to current times. This right here that you guys are looking at right now is a Series 1 Hulk Hogan. As you guys can see, let me zoom in real quick. He does have a belt on him. Which is very cool for this being the first ever action figure produced by WWF. They did a really, really good job. The company that first ever started off action figure making for WWF was a company by the name of LJN. LJN had six series total and also their figures were made of rubber. If we zoom in here, this person came with a crutch that looks like. And a hat, Terry Funk. Um, so they did come with stuff. They came with accessories based off of their gimmicks, um, but not all came with accessories. Each figure stood at about eight inches tall. Let's zoom in on Macho Man right here. As you see, he has no accessories, but his face and his trunks and everything is very, very highly detailed. And LJN did an amazing job for this being their first ever series produced. Some figures came in tag teams, such as Iron Sheik and I don't really want to know how to say his name. Akala, oh, you you can you know who he is. Um, anyways, they came in tag team packs with the pair of tag titles, as you can see right there, with a really cool detailed box. LJN also offered the Slingham Flingham wrestling ring as well as the cage match accessory. Now. If I was a kid growing up in this time, I would have been so stoked to get this cage add-on. This would have been like the highlight of my childhood if I was growing up in this time. For the first ever company to already have a cage match accessory that showed how quick and how dedicated they were to improving the action figure community. LJN also offered bendies. Now bendies are pretty much the same exact thing as all the other figures. But they had a metal wiring in them. I guess that was to make them bend better and go back into shape. I don't really know the point to it. But hey, I don't know what life was like back then. So this might have been a really popular toy right here. LJN also offered some wrestlers. Now, I don't know what it was like that back then. But based off of today, I think some wrestlers would have been like one of the most boring things ever. Because you could just rather get an action figure or a pack of action figures of a tag team instead of little thumb ones that you wrestle with. I don't think that would be much fun. They also came out with a 16-inch series which only included, included Hulk Hogan and Rowdy Roddy Piper. As you can see in this one, it's a lot taller than all the other ones. And he has a big belt right here. Um, this is a much bigger one than the action figures that you see today. Um, I assume that's why there was only two, and they might not have had enough materials to be able to make multiple series of this. And also, they offered stretch wrestlers. Um, if you've ever heard of a stretch Armstrong, that's pretty much what they are. Um, they, you could bend them, and they would end up shrinking back into their normal state of where they came in. And some of the figures came with posters. But in 1989, LJN sadly closed, and their final series was a black card series, meaning the packaging was black. And they also had a melee figures. Um, the WWF contract was awarded to Hasbro, but these figures did not have the best articulation or reability to play with them. I guess you could say they are responsible for starting the wrestling figure craze, and they hold lots of memories for collectors from all walks of life. Hasbro figures started in 1990. The toys were made of plastic, and some came with accessories, such as Jake the Snake Roberts with a snake, as you see right here. Um, for them going from rubber to plastic, I'm sure that might have been a hard thing to do, seeing as the paint jobs would be different. Um, but the accessories they had were really, really cool, as you can see the snake right here. Many of the Hasbro figures are now rare collectibles, and some of them go from anywhere between twenty to two thousand dollars if they are still in the package. Um, this is because the figures were produced in small amounts, and they had a very limited number of mail away promotions. 
as you can see here, we have Sid Justice, and you, you can't really tell there's plastic or anything here. I don't know if this picture has the, like, if this was taken out or what. Um, but yeah, for them, if for them being this old, they look really, really nice. A very small number of Hasbro figures were released on a dual card and go today around $1,000 per figure. What makes these figures different from LJN is the figures had various spring-loaded actions, such as punches and clotheslines. Some of the figures were released with accessories based off their gimmicks, just like Jake the Snake, as you guys previously saw. If you look here, we have Yokozuna, and his detail on this is... He didn't really wear that much in-depth, hard stuff to do, um, but by the looks of it, they nailed his attire and everything about this figure. It's a really, really nice figure. Hasbro also offered tag team packs, as you can see here, we have the Bushwhackers, um, and it's very, very, they're very, very small compared to what you see today, um, I don't know what materials they had back then, um, but it took them years upon years to get bigger figures, but I don't know how the process goes in making figures, so they might not have just been able to, but action figures have evolved so much since back then. But by the looks of this, it, it looks amazing. Hasbro also released two rings, this normal ring and then a King of the Ring ring. Hasbro figures were produced for a very short time, but their impact on the figure community will last forever. Mattel even released their own line of Hasbro-inspired retro figures, which we will touch on later in the video. Jax Pacific started production of the WWF figures in 1996 with the WWF Superstars line. As you can see here, we have Diesel here. Still the smaller figures. Um, How many years is this now? It's like eight years, maybe nine years around that time. Um, but for was what they worked with um, and it being like the earlier stages of figures, these look really, really good. The WWF Superstars ended up evolving into WWF Bone, uh, Bone Crushers line, and that lasted nine series before being replaced by the WWF Titantron live figures. This is a King of the Ring one. This has come after the WWF Superstars. It's just the Bone Crushers one. Very, very, very nice packaging, I think. Compared to today, this packaging tops it by so much. Yeah, it's the actual picture of the rock like these have, but you have a very, very cool writing in King of the Ring and a little roach right here. They did very, very well in the packaging back then. While the face scans were not the best of the Titan Tron figures, they were the top of the line at that time, and they featured a microchip on their foot that would trigger the specific Superstars entrance theme play when use the Titan Tron playset. As you can see here, we have Stone Cold. You cannot see the ch uh, the chip at the bottom. I think I might actually have this figure in my bin of collections. I don't know. I might look after this video. Um, if this is the playset that they use with this figure. As you can see here, this one comes with the Vince McMahon. But this is the stage way that you got. It's try, try the Titan Tron. They have similar stuff like this, but I think this one is so much better than what we have today. Um, although figures have evolved, the creativity that they have stayed behind, I think, personally. The Defining Moments series was different from everything else because it has a very detailed figure with their entrance gear for the wrestler. Pretty much, it's a combination of the elites and the entrance greats. The Titantron playset series kept evolving until 2003 when Jax introduced their best-selling line, Ruthless Aggression. The Ruthless Aggression figures featured more articulation and often came with weapons, titles, and various accessories. As you can see here, this was a six-pack, or it might just have been a poster, I'm not too sure. But we finally, finally, after all these years, we have tall figures like you see today. I actually have this Shawn Michaels, and I have this Rey Mysterio in my bin of collections, and they really compete with today's figures. Although today's figures might be more, um, better materialized for what they worked with back then, and if being the first taller figures, these are phenomenal. 
In 2010, Mattel opened up for business. In 2010, Mattel came out with a basic series, which was revolutionary for the action figures. They ended up releasing six basic series throughout 2010. This is also a Ruthless Aggression Goldberg right here. He came with a fire hydrant. Um, I assume this is around the time he first got started with the company. Um, but he has pretty much a, a basic gear, just all black gear. Um, so it wasn't really that hard, but they nailed the face, I think. You can look at this picture and compare it to the actual picture. Man, I think they did an amazing job. Props to them for this. This line continued to grow bigger, bigger, and bigger. And they soon introduced my personal favorite line of figures of all time, the classic superstars, which featured legends of the Illumini of WWE, ECW and WCW. The classic line featured various exclusives and multi-packs and even had throwbacks to the classic LJN figures. As we see here, this is a Hulk Hogan. Um, he has a mask um, when he ma when he disguised himself as that mask guy. Um, very cool shirt. I think that's a stop no, that's not a stop sign, but that's a sign that he uses and I don't really know what this is. But the Classic Superstars is by far my favorite series they ever produced. Jax then evolved with the WWE Deluxe Aggression, which had 27 points of articulation versus the 15 points of standard Ruthless Aggression line. The Deluxe Aggression then went on to include the Classic Deluxe. As we see here, this is the Deluxe Aggression. You have Triple H with a sledgehammer. This is one of the best packaging with accessories that you probably could have ever gotten back then. The sledgehammer still has the same material that we use today. And this Triple H figure, man, the detail is so good. This is like one of my favorite figures ever produced. The Deluxe Aggression then went on to include the Classic Deluxe, and that was made right up and until Jack's contract expired with WWE. As you can see, this Stone Cold, oh my god. Gosh, how many belts do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six belts and an interchangeable shirt. I think there's like a plaque or something right here. But oh my gosh, I will, I really want to buy this just to hang it on my wall. Uh, I don't want to unbox it. I don't want to take it out anything. I just want this beautiful packaging and beautiful figure just to sit on my wall. While these figures didn't get a lot of deserved hate because Jack's lack of attention to the detail and often they had to repaint them. They were my entire childhood throughout various Christmases and birthdays when it was time for presents nothing was better than unwrapping the figures that you had wanted since you saw them and ads were even better when you got the figures you never knew existed. As you can see here we have Mike Knox. There's not really too much to see here. This is the series 5 version. I didn't want to start off right at the beginning because it wasn't really the best then. And it's still not really the best now. It's just very, it sounds too cliche, but it's very basic. And I see why people did not really enjoy these ones. Also in 2010, Mattel released the Elites. Now this is an Elite Kane. You can see the Elites are so much better than the basics because you have a mask. That you can put it on his head, and you have normal corporate cane. You have a chair and two hands. You would probably most likely see elites in your Walmarts or your local stores compared to the basics because elites are more popular. Now, the difference between elites and basics is the basics are usually cheaper and generally come with no accessories, as you guys just previously saw. But the Elite Series comes with accessories, such as shirts, weapons, hats, and they have more points of joint manipulation. They had Elites based off a specific pay-per-view events, as you can see with Sasha Banks right here. Now this is a very, very iconic moment in professional wrestling history, and they put that into a figure, which is so, so cool. You have Sasha Banks with a unveiling table, and then the Raw Women's title. This is when the Raw Women's title was unveiled by Lita, and she handed it to Sasha Banks. Mattel also released a line of entrance great figures, 
and it was pretty much a basic figure, but with incredible detail on the wrestler's entrance, as you see here. The figure is a basic figure that you would get, but he has all of his entrance gear right on him, and that's what made these figures so special. In 2014, Mattel released my favorite thing that Mattel has ever produced. I have so many defining moments, and I love them so, so much. The Defining Moments was released in 2014, and there is about five or six series now of them, I think. In 2019, Mattel did something amazing. They introduced an Ultimate Edition series. Now, as you see here, let's focus on the Shinsuke Nakamura currently. He has three heads all together, two sets of arms, and three sets of hands that are all interchangeable. The same thing goes with Bret Hart. Now these makes it where you can focus on their different gimmicks and change them out if you were to make their face facial expressions different when you play with the action figures. And also, with the basics and elites, the hand movements are like pretty much stuck in place. With the ultimate edition, you have some where you can have the hands open out, a fist, and then like the hands slightly open where you can fit maybe a weapon or something in there. This was Definitely an amazing move by, by Mattel, and man, I love these so much. I don't have any in my possession, but I'm really looking forward to be getting some soon. Mattel is still changing the world from today. After 10 years of being in business, Mattel has over 100 plus basic series and 77 plus elite series. When Jack's contract ended with WWE, I started to fall out of love with WWE action figures. Maybe that was a combination of me growing up and not actually playing with them, or maybe it was just me not wanting to accept the change in style of the figures. But slowly, whenever I saw a glimpse of a figure at Walmart or an ad on for an Elite on TV, I felt almost brought in to purchase one or two or even the whole entire set, not to play with, but to collect or even try to regain a little bit of the spark of childlike glee I had when I was younger. In the end, collecting is all about what makes you happy. From figures to classic Coke bottles, it's all about nostalgia and the love you have for your specific hobby.